morning. Good morning. Wow, that was loud. Welcome to you here in the sanctuary and to those of you who are with us on YouTube. It's another hot Sunday morning in Middle Tennessee, but I think it's cool here. I have something behind me, which you have already seen, for you to wonder about. And yes, and we will see what will happen with it. Let's worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and will the children come forward. There's some in there. I know. Oh, good. Anybody else? Uh -huh. Maybe she has decided she's not ready to come up today. Okay, let's see. How do we get the, Okay. What is this right in front of you? A milk jug. A milk jug? Does it have milk in it? No. What's in it? Water. Why do you think there's a milk jug full of water right here? Any ideas? Let's stand up and look at it. Does it look different in any way? Um, no. No, I, I agree. It's just plain old water, but with your help, we are going to turn it into something else. So, the altar guild needs holy water. Do you have any idea? Have you ever heard of holy water? No? Have you ever heard of holy water? No. Were you all baptized by chance? Um. Do you remember it? Tell me what you remember about your baptism. Do you remember anything? Have you ever seen a baptism? Um, dumped on the head. Dumped on the head. Mm -hmm. Did you get wet? Yes. Yes, yes. What did you say? Well, I just wiped it off. You just wiped it off. That well, was a good idea. Well, I got wet on my shoes. On your shoes. Well, you, they were just high heels. Just high heels. I bet they could handle getting wet. Well, the thing is, in order to baptize, we need holy water. And usually in the baptism service, we say prayers. Usually in the baptism service, we say prayers that make the water holy. But sometimes we need holy water for another reason. Like, look in the back. What, what's that back there? Run back and look in it. Run back. Look and see what's there. Look and see. Look in. Put your hand in it. Is it wet? Well, come back and throw the water at people. Guess what you've just done? You have blessed yourselves and the people here because that's holy water. So sometimes we use holy water to put in the glass bowl. When people come into church, they put their hand in it. And then they go, they make a cross, and they are blessing themselves, saying, I am here and ready to pray. I am here and ready to be with you, God. So, but the holy water gets used up, so we are going to make more. You three with me, the three of us are going to make more. If there's anybody else that wants to come up and help us, they can come. We need this. This is the recipe book. Okay? It has another name besides recipe book. Do you know what this is? What is it? Do you have any idea? A Bible. No, but it's a good guess. Another idea? Not. What? <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to tell you it's a prayer book. It's called the Book of Common Prayer. And... It has the recipe. So let's stand up here.
because it needs somebody to say the words, that's me, someone to touch it. Put your hands up, we have to touch it. And we're gonna take the top off so you can put your finger in. Okay, got your finger in? Okay, we touch the water. This is the prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. And you've just done it. This is now holy water. And you've got a special blessing by having your hands touching that holy water. It's a pretty neat thing. So I'm going to tell you one other thing. I want you to look at this. Do you know what this is called? It's called a stole. And it's, I wear it because it's a sign of me being a priest. And all priests, when they're doing the work of a priest, wear a stole. But this is a special one. It comes from Peru. Can you tell why it's special? They may not be able to see. What, what do you see? Uh, I'm a cow. I see a cow right there. A cow? Uh-huh. What is this one? I know. What? A llama? It looks like a llama, but I think it's a camel. And what about this one? You know who this one is? Jesus. Yes, I am. Jesus. That's right. This is all stories of Jesus. And there are stories, that, look, in the windows, we have stories. So we learn about Jesus a lot of different ways. We learn about Jesus from stories like this and in the windows. We learn about Jesus from the Bible and from doing things like making holy water. So let's say a prayer, okay? Dear Jesus, we thank you for giving us stories, for giving us special things to do. like making holy water. We thank you for being with us all the time. Help us to remember the stories. Amen. Thank you for your help this morning. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abraham, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. 
Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him, Suppose forty are found there. He answered, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He answered, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 138 in unison. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O oh Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith and the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him. When he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands, he set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. 
The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Lord, Christ. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me, the door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more Will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen.
Well, you've just heard Luke's version of the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer, these words are so familiar that many of us could simply say them in our sleep. This familiarity is a comfort in ordinary times and in times of trouble. But have you ever noticed that we Episcopalians have two versions of the Lord's Prayer? Take out your prayer book. I think there's one right in the pew in front of you. Turn to page 364 and look. There it is on the left-hand side, two versions. Now the words we usually say are on the left, but look at the right column. That's what we call the contemporary version. I have to tell you, I use this contemporary version at a church that I was new to, and I was practically thrown out of the church. What did you do with our Lord's Prayer? So I'm going to explain some things to maybe help you understand why we have two versions. Because after all, the prayer that we say is really beautiful, isn't it? So why would we want to modernize? The simple fact is that the contemporary version is closer to the original intent of the words. But why? Why is there a better translation? Why didn't the original version do? And that's because there have been discoveries since the time of our familiar words. In 1945, a collection of documents was found in the desert near Nag Hammadi, Egypt. Another collection known as the Dead Sea Scrolls, and I know you've all heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls, they were found between 1945 and 1956 on the West Bank. These two discoveries provide biblical scholars with a wealth of new information about the meaning of the original languages of the Bible. In fact, it took years for scholars to decode the discoveries and even today, the interpretation work continues. In fact, I just got something in the mail yesterday about a revolutionary new finding that maybe you'll hear about in time. But today, let's stick with this one. When this prayer book was published in 1978, there was sufficient knowledge to write a version of the Lord's Prayer that was closer to the original intention expressed in the Gospels. The lovely Elizabethan language of the King James Version was replaced, precision replaced poetry. Listen again to the words I just read to you from Luke. Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. I think that sounds a lot like the prayer on the right side. Maybe you do too when you look at it. The contemporary version, the right side in the prayer book, is a combination of these verses from Luke and the longer prayer that comes from the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew. Luke's prayer is short, simple, to the point, and yet Luke tells us it is a sufficient model and example for our prayers. So let's look at it, if this is how Jesus tells us to pray. We begin by acknowledging relationship with God. God the Father, that was not a, a new concept at the time of Jesus. But the a word used for father is different. Abba, daddy. This daddy denotes intimacy, a personal relationship that is one of respect. Respect, hallowed, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. But where is your will be done? Luke says not necessary. 
Praying for God's reign is the same thing as praying for God's will. No need to say anything twice. The priority of this, this prayer is first, naming our relationship to God. Intimate, Abba, Daddy. And second, claiming God's goals as our own. Your kingdom come. And then we move to our own needs, both physical and forgiveness, salvation. In addition to the intimacy and simplicity of this prayer, let's also think about the directness. There's no mincing of words here. Each petition is direct. Now, I do need to tell you that one commentator thinks that the tone here is pushy, demanding even. That view is supported by the story of the persistent neighbor in the middle of the night. But I prefer to interpret this as a prayer of confidence. So how does Jesus tell us to pray? In these words, what are these words? Intimate, simple, confident. God first, then our needs, and all done in community. Notice, it's not my father, it's our father, it's we. We ask for our daily bread, for forgiveness of our sins, not my sins. Now, I know when that time I got in trouble with the contemporary version, people really disliked that word sin. It was too bold for them, too in your face. They thought trespass was so much softer so much more polite, kinder, and gentler. Well, I thought about how I explained trespassing to my children. I told the five-year-old, you know, it's like the time you went to the next door neighbor's yard and picked the daffodils, and then we had to take the flowers back because you trespassed. Well, so easy, so gentle. We just go and say, I'm sorry. We excuse trespasses easily. But, ah, sin, that has to do with something wrong, much more than the mistake of a trespass. And if it is my sin, our sin, we are the ones who did wrong. There is a temptation to make prayer complicated. Do we think we need fancy language sprinkled with these and thys, as if God only understands Elizabethan English? Or can we stay with the simplicity of Luke's prayer and use ordinary language? Desire motivates us to ask for more than the daily bread. We want cake, a feast. Our prayers become a shopping list for all the things we would like God to do for us. And of course, we do pray for good things like shelter for the homeless, cure for the sick, jobs for the unemployed. But this reading from Luke convinces us that if we only pray, pray hard enough, our prayers will be answered. Isn't this the meaning of the man waking up his neighbor in the middle of the night? Many years ago, I read a book about prayer. The author was fully convinced that all prayers are answered if we pray correctly. I remember reading his words when he told a story about a person who had been praying for a bicycle but not received one. Now this author said the problem was the prayer hadn't been specific. He hadn't said what model, what color. Isn't that incredible? This kind of thinking implies that God is Amazon on high. But nowhere are we told that we get everything we want, even if we want. What we want is a good thing. Prayers are answered, but not always as we plan, not always in our time frame. Sometimes the answer is no. I remember teaching my children when I said no, that was an answer. No is an answer. Or Wait and see, or maybe later. Have any of you read the Father Tim novels by Jan Karen? They were published, yeah, you have Becky, yeah, Pat. 
Uh, they were published beginning in 1994. The novels tell the story of Father Tim, an Episcopal priest living in the imaginary town of Mitford, North Carolina. From time to time, Father Tim talks about the prayer that is always answered. Do you remember that? The prayer that is always answered. When I was reading these books, I was curious. What is this prayer that is always answered, I wondered. Eventually, the secret was revealed. The prayer that is always answered is, Thy will be done. And so every Sunday we pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done. We pray in the expectation that this prayer will be answered, but we do not know how or when. While we do pray, Your kingdom come, we cannot possibly imagine what this world would be like if God's way was the way of all life. So it is not that we know what's going to happen, but that trust in God's goodness and love allows us to make the request. Our prayer arises out of our responding to God's love. We join the conversation that God initiates. In our anxiety to get things right, we make prayer too hard. We forget that when we learn how to talk, we began one word at a time, and that simple sentences preceded complex statements in our learning of language. We learned how to speak because we followed the example of others. Prayer is something that takes a lifetime of learning. Our prayer is never perfect, but in Jesus we have the best teacher and the best example. And here is the Lord's Prayer, giving us guidelines. We pray as a community of faith. Our prayer is both intimate and respectful. Our prayer is simple and direct. Our prayer is confident. And now, all we have to do is practice. Our worship continues with the Nicene Creed. Let us stand and say together, we believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, The prayers of the people are form four, beginning on the bottom of page five. Let us pray for the church and for the whole world. 
Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our bishop, Michael, our presiding, John, our bishop, Cristobal, Bishop of Littoral, Ecuador, and Caroline, our new rector-elect, that they may, <clears throat> both in their life and doctrine, set forth your true and lively word and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Du Bois Conference Center, Monteagle, and in the Anglican cycle of prayer, the church in Wales. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all nations, especially Joe, the President of the United States, Kamala, Vice President of the United States, Congress, the Supreme Court, Bill, the Governor of Tennessee, in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to, uh, and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all, all, <clears throat> bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for the men and women serving our country in the armed forces. Casey Feather, Robert Hagens, Caleb Dozier, Dalton Branson and Peyton Downs. For our missionaries with Barnabas International, Mark and Susan Powell. We pray for all those celebrating birthdays, especially Dale McDonald, Kimberly Goulden, Sarah Nowicki, Melody Sharafi, Mary Nagel, Audrey Roberts, Thomas Field, Rebecca Fleeter, Dave Fleeter, Pat Morris, Eleanor Roberts, Chad Moore, and Pat Rollett. Lord, in your mercy, <clears throat> comfort and heal all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Linda Hannon, Pat Wallace, Carolyn Leroy, Rodney White, Lyle and Caroline Robertson, Genevieve Lish, Robin Ertz, the Franklin family, and Logan Rooker. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, to whom our needs before, are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will in those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in all word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved you with our whole heart. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, and strengthen you all in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Good morning. I have a few announcements. Pardon the frog in my throat. <clears> it <throat> doesn't want to jump out. I want to welcome our visitors in person and online. Hello there. Good morning. Um, please fill out one of the visitors' cards that are in the front of your pew. Uh, fill it out and drop it in the collection plate. Um, you may also leave a note on the website. A group of folks gather on Tuesdays at 9.30 to pray for our visitors. Whether you have found a church home or if your first visit today is a, way, a stopping point on your journey, um, we would like to include you in our prayers. The adults are studying People of the Way. Uh, we invite you to pick up a cup of coffee and join us 15 minutes after church. Um, as we read together in the Sunshine Room. Next week, we will be welcoming Mother Caroline Osborne as our rector. So everyone's excited about that. There will be a barbecue luncheon afterwards. Uh, so please plan on being here and joining us for lunch. Um, those of you that can, please uh, bring a dessert homemade or Kroger made or Publix made or whatever. Um, we would like for you to bring a dessert. Um, <clears throat> also next week, uh, Jennifer um, up in our office has been busy making new name tags. So if you don't have one, you will have one next week. Jeff and I will be ushers next week, so we'll try to make sure that you get your name tag. We want to try to wear them uh, regularly uh, till Mother Caroline gets to know us or just wear them always. George has gotten me into the habit of wearing mine, so um, I've become uh, used to wearing it. Anyways, um, <clears throat> on Sunday, August 7th, there will be a blessing of teachers and backpacks as students and teachers return to school. Uh, please remind your children to bring their backpacks to church to be blessed. And thank you very much and welcome Reverend Molly Dale. Thank it looks you. like this might be the last of this segment. Yes. You know, maybe you can, yeah, I know. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, good and faithful servants. You're getting ready to enter into some joy. I am so happy for you. It has been my privilege and joy to work, walk with you these last few weeks and some of your journey. And I've gotten to know all of you some and some better than others. And um, Tennessee is not a great big, huge place. Our paths will, will cross, but it's time for me to go. And I am just so thrilled that you have done your work and that Caroline will be with you next week. So. I was thinking I would give a little lecture on the care and feeding of rectors, but I don't think I need to do that because you guys have been around the block and you probably know what that is. And if not, you have Scott who definitely knows and who will, will say that. But 
You are, this is a beautiful church. You have wonderful resources here. Everyone who I have gotten to know has just been so welcoming and so gracious. You have so much to offer. Caroline is blessed as you are blessed with her. I think it's going to be a wonderful relationship and God will be with you. And I will continue my prayers for you, of course, but I know God will be with you. With glad and generous hearts, let us bring forth the offering of our life and labor to the Lord our God. We continue with Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with blessed Philip, ever blessed Virgin Mary, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I want to tell you, that I will be distributing the bread and putting it in your hands. If you do not want the wine, go on and consume the bread, but it remain at the altar until the chalice has come by. If you do want the, the wine also, leave the wafer in your hand and Cassie will pick it up and then tinct it for you and give it back to you. The body of Christ, the blood of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you leave this place, may the living Lord go with you. May God go behind to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, beneath you to lift you from your sorrows, within you to give you the gifts of faith, hope, and love, and always before you to show you the way. The blessing of God, the holy undivided Trinity, be upon you this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's been lovely to be 
Oh, sorry, we got a good elbow bump. Oh, okay, well, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.